I'm Brett Hickey, founder and CEO of Starmount Capital. Excited to be here today with uh, David Markson from Evercore to talk a little bit about secondaries as well as collateralized fund obligations and CFOs. David, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. So what, why don't we start with David? Views in today's uncertain economic environment, uh, various challenges, questions on valuations. Talk to us a little bit about secondaries. Why are investors finding secondaries of interest? How can it be a potential complement for their portfolio? So first, uh, secondaries have been growing quite a bit. I've been doing that 14 years. I started in 2009, it was about 10 billion. And now I think this year is going to be the third year in a row where we exceed 100 billion of wow. market volume. So it's been a growing asset class. It went from niche to, to slightly more mainstream. And I think there's still a lot of growth. Um, investors, when when I speak to them, they like a number of a number of the characteristics of secondaries. They like the diversification, the downside protection, the low loss ratio for secondaries, and the fact that you can get nabbed in the ground faster than through primaries. That's I think great. those are some of the the, the key elements. And, and as you think about uh, a new area that's further developed, as you talk about the growth in secondaries, given private credit has grown so much, we now have the emergence of private credit secondaries. I know at Star Mountain, we've been doing it for over a decade, but it's become more mainstream now, given how large and fragmented and differentiated the market of private credit is, has created a need for that. How are you seeing clients think about today's high interest rate environment and the demand for or the opportunity in investing in credit-oriented secondaries? I think there's a really uh, interesting risk-return profile to, to private credit and to private credit secondaries. A lot of investors right now on the secondary side, sec- secondary side are looking at the growth of the amount that were raised in private credit. And when you look at these charts, you have to think there is going to be a growing market in private credit secondaries. We're starting to see that. And I think the merits of secondaries that I've talked about, downside protection, a shorter duration to liquidity or to exits, and low loss ratio, I think those are key characteristics of, of private credit in general. And so that mentality can be applied to the private credit secondaries. Yeah, it makes sense. Give, given where rates are at today, it's it's hard to think about generating too much higher returns than what you can yeah. get through credit-oriented returns if, if you can keep loss rates low. Yeah. Let, let's now talk about an overlay. Yeah. Uh, at, at Evercore, you guys uh, have another specialized division within collateralized fund obligations or CFOs. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what CFOs are and why that's an appeal to investors to have different ways to select their various risk, reward, and yield, and return, and liquidity characteristic desires out of that. So what's interesting is CFO, the technology, has been around for for probably 20 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's a way for investors to generate liquidity while retaining uh, exposure to to certain asset classes, so to, to their private equity investments, private equity, private credit investments. You tranche the portfolio, you put a class A, potentially a class B, and you have the equity. On the investor side, it's a way to get access to that underlying exposure to private credit or private equity funds and to to decide where you want to play in the risk spectrum. If you like the underlying exposure and you want to be on the more conservative side, you go into class A and you're more senior in the cap structure. You get that underlying exposure. You can look through it and you can toggle where you want that risk return profile. If you want more, you know, higher risk, potentially higher return, you might want to be in the equity, which is a way almost to view it as a levered bet on that underlying portfolio. Very similar to how I think secondary buyers, you know, think about buying entire portfolios, potentially putting leverage on the back end. You can do that through the CFO structure. Yeah, and I guess there's some similarities for an equity return desire with a collateralized loan obligation or CLO yeah. portfolio, yeah. Uh, with generally a lot less leverage than what CLOs would, would typically have on them, I would presume. Yeah. So that's probably something investors are thinking of. Uh, well, that's great. Thank you for the uh, information and education. We're excited for the uh, panel today. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much.